As soon as I hit record, the clock starts going off. Isn't that nice? I mean, I guess that I knew it was going to happen. That's what happens when the hour hit. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Sorry, pumpkin. I know. That was invasive. My bad. I'm sorry. Everybody always wants a little bit of pumpkin time, pumpkin. Why are you being elusive? Where are you going? I know. You got plans, you busy girl. It's, uh, I was gonna say it's a beautiful day. That's just a lie. It's a little bit gloomy and cold. There's a cold front moving and it's supposed to drop down to, uh, right now it says three degrees. Other things say six. Either way, that's too cold. I'm talking Fahrenheit here. So, I need to prep some things for outside, but I have, like, a day to do that. I also, I've already started some potting things going on out there. It's a mess, though. I'm not taking y'all along for that until I get things more tidied up. But before I get going protecting things outside, so like I said, there's a couple days until that happens. I need to clean up my houseplants, particularly the adenidias. Their foliage is getting kind of dusty. You could say it's getting a little bit dull, and this is the time of year when I start to worry about spider mites. So I need to do some things with them. There's a sponge I usually use for this, and I use it to wash my car. No, I don't want to use it on my plant, so I need to go grab a mix. So let's go to the dollar store. Uh, hey. Hi, Tobes. You good boy, Toby. He's you. I use a dig good Toby. I don't know for sure about the dollar store I'm going to go to. It's just a Dollar Tree. But the, hi, sweetie, the, what was I trying to say? The one that I usually go to has the mitts that you put, you put them on your hand and it's got lots of things. You'll see it when I get there. Hopefully they'll have it in stock. You come over to give me kisses? No, you just wanted to smell me. You thought maybe there was a cookie in this hand? You thought there were cookies? Okay. You'll get cookies when I get home. You've already had enough. I'll be right back, Blinken. I love you. Don't be mad. I'm sorry. Okay. I was just walking out the door. And what, I don't understand what the deal is with the Gorilla Tape. Did I get a bad batch? Like, this plastic just keeps coming down. That's never been an issue before. It's Gorilla, I mean, it's in the name. That stuff, I mean, it tears your wall off if you get it on your wall. But up here on the, I don't know, maybe when I rehang it this time, I'll, like, give the ceiling a little bit of a wipe down with, like, some rubbing alcohol or just something that has a desiccant in it, like Windex or something. To, maybe there's oil up there. I'm annoyed because it's really not fun getting a ladder in here and getting this stuff, but it just keeps coming down. I've been wondering why I'm having trouble keeping the temperature up over there. I don't normally come around this way, but it's cold, so I have to go out this lip. There's a little door here. Do things the kind of old school way. Come on. There we go. go ahead and lock that and go to the dollar store. I'm going to have to... Yeah, the, everything's gonna have to come in. Three degrees, that's too much. Um, did that say, t that, no. That license plate said TYD fan. Like, did that, was that supposed to be t Diddy fan? No. Uh, I don't know what else that would be though. I mean, I would hope that whoever would put that on their license plate would realize that that's what that's gonna come across. What? Uh, maybe tidy? Like they really like doing laundry or they're just a clean freak? That's a possibility, right? I'm trying to give this seemingly perverted person the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know, man. You had to know that that sounds like kitty fan. Uh, as usual, Dollar Tree looks incredibly busy, so I may not even be able to vlog in there. I don't know, but I'll at least we'll put this, this, this. Don't worry about it. Oops. store. Hey, Tobes. Nothing? Little tail wag. Yes, the rugs are still out. You know, Tucker's an old man. He's not around. He's sleeping. That's mostly what he does now, but I gotta have the rugs out, so I need to get a replacement rug for that right there. But anyways, dollar store happened. Got what I needed. I went ahead and left the label on here. 
just in case somebody wanted to see. It's just cheap little one dollar microfiber wash mitts. These are similar to what I use in my car, but what's the use of my car much, much, much bigger, uh, but also cost more than a dollar. You just put them on like a glove. So I have two containers here, one that I use just for fresh clean. This one's damp with warm water. And this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's just a teeny tiny drop of soap in there. I'll go ahead and put some lukewarm water in here. They just need enough soap. It's just regular Dawn dish soap. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The whole point of the soap is to, well, it helps get things clean for one, that's important. And uh, uh, it can help kind of suffocate out any critters or anything that's living on the foliage. I also do a similar method here if I'm doing something with a neem or a horticultural oil of any kind. I'll use these gloves just to help spread it around the plants a little bit easier. And I only do this for really big plants. This isn't how I do things for little dainty things. That would be very difficult. And yeah, you see that? Look at how easy, uh, that looks so weird. So one side has all these little microfibery pieces on it and the other side's just microfiber cloth. And doing it, this is gonna, how am I, oh, how am I gonna do this? I don't have a tripod tall enough to really help me out here. Put a glove on each hand. These had the soapy water on them and just, and I just go ahead and uh, put one on the bottom side of the foliage and then on the upper side and I press and pull gently, not too hard. I repeat this until the foliage is clean. I'd probably say I would do this maybe once a month, more than likely, uh, sometimes every other month. Things get dusty, wanna keep the foliage clean, and like I said, I have been seeing some mealybugs and whatnot in here, so by going through and using these gloves that really, with the soapy water, it really helps get them off there. The soap helps desiccate them and basically kill them, which is fantastic, and one of the reasons that I'm doing this. You can use dish rags or sponges, it doesn't really matter what you use. I I just find it easier with the large foliage and the large plants. I mean, for a buck a piece, this is fantastic. I also like to make sure I really get inside the spears that are coming out the centers of the palm trees and really any new growth on plants because that's where most soft-bodied insects feed is on new foliage for the most part. A really effective way to get them off of there and then of course need to go up and down the trunks as much as possible really also just because I want all the dust off the plants and any critters, anything that can be on there. It's just good to get them off of there, you know? Having a nice dust-free foliage makes it a lot easier for plants to photosynthesize so it, more light can get through to the leaves and uh, it helps reduce the critters. So if I were to have been better about doing this once a month like I should have been, then this probably, like the mealybugs, I probably maybe wouldn't even have seen them because I would have been on top of it a little bit better. But I mean, still doing this probably every other week at this point for those mealybugs, that should handle it. And it's extremely quick and easy and it's actually kind of fun. Now, if I had a ton of plants that I needed to do this with, I probably wouldn't, right? I mean, would you? I don't know. I mean, I would still do it, but it would be like once a month, if even, pardon the crackly noises from the, what's it called? Tripod? Yeah, the tripod, it's making noise. Yeah, it's easy um, with bigger plants, I think. Little plants, I just take them to the sink and wash them off. It's nice, I like having the nice clean foliage. It makes a big difference, especially with things like Adenidia palms and the foxtail palm back there. These are plants that need a lot of sunlight and uh, that's hard for them to get one during winter to just being inside. Uh, there is a decent amount of light that comes through. There's some big windows over here on this wall. So they get a good amount of morning sun, but they aren't exactly like growing. They're just kind of sitting still. Oh, look at that. That's the water from the palm trees. See, they were very dirty. Wow, they needed to be clean. I don't think it's been that long. I actually, I think I did this just after Christmas. It's still probably been too long, but like once a month. So I guess I missed early February. My house is dusty though. I have a very, very dusty home, but that's, that's what came off there. And that's why I like to use um, just a dish with some soapy water and then one with some clean water so I can first go through with the soapy water and then I go over it with just regular just clean water because the soap if it dries on there while it's dusty then you end up having the dust just kind of trapped on there so uh, that would be when uh, if I wanted to maintain more of a gloss on the foliage then I would go back over it with soap and this is only how I would do things in an extreme circumstance like this when they're like really dirty otherwise just like some clean water, some soapy water, and like, you're usually good to go. It's not, not a big deal. It's not very complicated. Just want to keep the junk off your leaves. That's all. Oh, and real quick, before I move on, just a word of caution. If you're doing this, whether it's with a rag, 
one of these guys, sponge, doesn't matter. But if you're wiping down plants in a specific area and you don't have some sort of oil or soap, really actually regardless of what you have on your rag, you want to be sure to clean them off thoroughly before moving on to the next area because if you got bugs over here, you got that on this, then I worry that the critters are just going to get spread around from this fig to the palm trees in there. Now, technically, you should clean between every single plant, like rinse and clean, just like to make sure you're not spreading things, but it's just, that's not really practical. And typically, if your plants are grouped together, I mean, if there's going to be bugs on this one, then chances are you have that same problem there, right? But it's just, what I'm saying is, be very cautious. Technically, you should rinse and wash between each application. I don't, I don't find that to be the most practical thing to do, so I just want to section it off and make sure that, especially if I have seen bugs, that these are actually going to go into my washing machine with a sanitizing, uh, the Lysol has a sanitizing detergent to make sure those get nice and clean, then they'll get an extra rinse just to be safe. I'm gonna do that right now, actually, before I start cleaning the other plants. Technically, these sorts of things should be cleaned between like every single plant, but I don't, I, who, who does that? I don't really think that's practical. Things that are grouped together, if one thing's sick, then the potential's already there for everything else. I know that that doesn't sound like the best mentality, but for people who have a lot of plants, it's just kind of the way it is. It's the way things go. You know, years ago, there was this thing going on with Fusarium. Uh, it's a problem with all plants, but particularly in orchids, it was becoming like a big issue. And everybody was panicking, Fusarium, Fusarium. It's like, don't let your plants be near each other. If water splashes from one to another. It's like, yeah, okay, that's true. But it's also just entirely impractical for people who have a large amount of plants like this these should not be this close together it's just kind of the way it has to go during the winter time so uh, yeah when i move from section to section i make sure to uh, switch out what i'm using i'll either switch to a rag or whatever or just clean what i've been using i already had a bunch of other stuff to wash so that wasn't really a big deal i had already pulled those out before the cute little shot of me pulling them out keeping things clean keep your foliage clean keep your cleaning supplies clean I know, might seem like I'm a bit of a hypocritical thing coming from me of all people as I'm sitting here with like literal dirt and soil and moss scraps over here on my desk. I have to say something about it just to be safe. Anyways, that's all of that. I was going to dive in more about like the photosynthesis aspect and the stomatal pores and whatnot on the foliage, but I thought like that might be getting in a little bit deep for a vlog essentially you know keep you keep the dust off your leaves and they'll photosynthesize better there's a lot more to it than that and it's really fun and nerdy and sciencey but i don't like i said i think that might be a bit much for the vlog if like leaf anatomy like the different macro and microbiology in there is something people would be interested in a video on let me know because it is i think interesting stuff but uh, it would, like, I think graphics and things would be necessary. We don't do that over here in the vlogs. Right here, this is the rest of the stuff that I got at the dollar store. Uh, not this. That's from Amazon. But they had some rocks. These are those nice dark rocks that I like a lot. I use them in a lot of videos. But the ones I usually use are from, like, Michael's Crafts or Lowe's. And they're, like, $7 for a jar. These are a dollar a piece. They're not quite as dark as the ones that I usually get, but like that's close enough for a buck. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And I had just run out from one of the Terrarium Tuesdays. I use up the rest. And then I just picked up some other little stupid things that I thought might be kind of fun to play around with on here. These are these little flower rocket that what I don't I don't fully understand it my guess would be it looks like it's just one of these things where you hydrate it and drop it into some soil and boom magical display of flowers I don't know maybe we'll see it's not quite time for me to plant something up like that yet and then a little seed starter kit it was only a buck it has a dome top on it and I was like okay well maybe we'll give that a shot and then i actually needed some teeny tiny little pots and the only reason i went and got them is because there is actually a drainage hole in these it's hard to find that these days getting pots with holes in them like for some reason that's a rare thing but i have some little tiny baby you see them up there above my fingernails some little parlor palms that i pulled out from a planter i did a uh, last two this past terrarium tuesday the cocodama 
I pulled out a couple little ones that didn't really fit, and I was like, well, this would work for that. Not that I'm sure I could have dug around and found plenty of tiny plastic pots, but for some... This just called to me. It was a dollar. It's fine. And then I got a uh, seven-quart drain pan. Uh, actually, I thought this would be nifty for soaking plants or, like, doing quick little pottings and things like that. I should give this a quick rinse, though. I do have some things that I need to give a little soak to. I have other tubs and bins, even like cheap old litter boxes that I use for this sort of thing, but I went ahead and thought, you know, a dollar, and I like the shape of it. I like that it has, that means it's useless, but it having a spout on it, for whatever reason, appealed to me. I don't know. Again, it's a dollar. I just gave that a rinse and then dumped it directly into the plant. I don't know what the point of that was. Why I felt, oh, I should give this a rinse when I'm just going to put the water into a plant. Yeah, it's fine. I've been having a few issues keeping the Poblano hydrated. It's always going to look worse to you guys because usually my watering day for that area and out here is like Fridays, which is usually when I'm out here showing these guys to you. So I should just probably do that another time. But I don't want to repot it right now. I'm laughing because my chair made a farting sound. I want to repot it right now just because like it's got the fruit on it and then it's in flower right now. See all the little flowers? Here's the poblano update, by the way. We'll just do this right now. So with plants like these, sometimes it's just easier to go ahead and let that water kind of wick up. I gave it a light watering, which does help a lot, but um, it's not quite enough to get that going so i have that in there and then i need to i think there's probably a few other plants on the shelf that i should grab and give those a soak and then you want to have a look at the i don't know why i'm asking you can't reply at this exact moment whoa as seen on tape we'll get back to that almost forgot to put in just a little bit of all purpose in there just a very very small amount don't use your hands to mix that up they don't need very much just a little bit things are warm enough out here that i don't worry too much about fertilizing doesn't really cause any awkward growth when they're under the grow lights with the heat and everything uh, the alacasia the amazonica it has done really well this winter it went into kind of like a dormant phase around late fall which is a little bit sooner than i would have expected it to but it's rebounded rebound it has had a nice rebound from all of that you can see lots of growth in there but i am having more trouble keeping it hydrated this year so i think that this was definitely one that let me look at look at how big she's thick right but again needs a repot so i have just kind of been watering this one from underneath just to be safe those need like 10 minutes to soak let's have a look at these here these little fragrant bouquet of flower rockets. Over 500 seeds. It's a never-ending bouquet. Continuous blooming. Great for indoors. You see that? Great for indoors. You know, just looking at that picture, I'm going to go ahead and say that's a lie. Place one flower rocket into loosened soil. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Maximum result. Soil temperature will be up to 60 degrees. Make sure soil is at top room of flow. Okay. Soak with water, then water twice. What? What? Water twice daily thereafter. Uh, yeah, do not let it dry out. This will decrease growth. Twice daily, huh? That seems extreme. What do these other ones say? Is it going to be the same thing? Yeah, okay. Same directions on all of these. That's what it looks like. Okay. And they do have like a list of what's in them i don't know if that's going to be accurate or not because like this these look like gerber daisies and yet it says that there are chrysanthemums in there it's not the same thing this one right here claims they have some shasta daisies in it and this one it's like snapdragons and a bunch of other things i don't know if i feel like doing this indoors this might be better for springtime because these are plants that would i think sow better outdoors when they've had some chill time you know but i am curious to open this up and see what we're working with here okay all right it's just that green netting material you know that they put down for like erosion control okay oh and she's dusty so you just stick this in the soil huh this is okay 
All right. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Some time ago, there was like a bit of a craze with these seed mats. You just kind of roll them out and water them. In the picture that's on here, it makes it look like you're working with some kind of disc, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like a disc of some sort? Oh, I guess not. Okay. I can see it better through the camera than I could, like, with my own eyes. These still, like, that doesn't... So what they're saying to do here, pardon the slowness of this, I'm just trying to not rip on this too much, but from the way that picture makes it look, they want it to be planted like this into the pot with the soil just above it. But that's going to be way, way, way too deep for seeds that are on the bottom of this mat. So like I was saying years ago, they had these mats that you just roll out and throw into your landscape and you water them and boom, you have a little garden. That's all, that's all this is. This is not some type of like little disc where you would pop this into your container and have flowers with it. You could maybe cut some slivers. Like I said, if you plant it like this, then that's not anything down here. It's not going to germinate. These are seeds that I'm seeing in pretty much every single one of these boxes here. These are all seeds that don't need to be planted more than like, I don't know, inch and a half maximum, maybe two. I wouldn't go deeper than that with any of these. These are like all seeds that you can pretty much just scatter and they'll grow. Uh, the, I don't know. Hmm. You guys let me know in the comments, what do you want me to do? You want me to try it out in a pot? Because if I do this, I'm just going to follow the directions. I'm not going to do it the way that I know I should do it. I'm going to do it the way they said to do it. Because you can't review it if you don't follow the directions. That's something that drives me crazy when I see a review of something and the person doesn't follow the directions and then they review the result. But it's like you can't... That's not an accurate result if you don't follow the rules. However, we know what... Like, gardeners, all of us, we know that that's not going to be appropriate. There will be some germination from whatever's up top but not from down below ha huh. interesting well it was a dollar so it's okay i got them for fun so we'll just see what happens there let me know what you want me to do if you want me to go ahead and throw them in a pot i will or uh might maybe cut these in half yes so they're not as long but still like that that right there that little picture they're given where it says just plant that's just gonna set people up for disaster and that's also that does that's not what that's not what this looks like lies yeah like i said let me know down in the comments what, what do you want me to do you want me to go ahead and start these inside or start them outside i think these would do much better started outdoors despite them all all three of them saying great for indoors like i said that's a lie it's just it's just a bold-faced lie it's not going to these, none of these are going to do great indoors. That's not true. I'm, unless, I mean, I don't know what they put in these, but that seems very unlikely. I think we all know that, right? No, probably not going to do great. Maybe you have like a nice sunny atrium or an extremely sunny window for flowering plants, but uh, I would say that's probably not going to be representative of the for the majority of people. So these have had like 10 minutes to soak now, so I'm going to probably go ahead and put these away. And then, uh, uh, gosh, there's just, like, stuff floating everywhere from that little seed pillow, whatever you want to call that. You can see it's still kind of thirsty, <laughs> but uh, I don't let things soak usually for more than 10 or 15 minutes. When you start to lose oxygen down around the roots of the plants, that's when, like, bad things start to happen. So 10 to 15 minutes is usually where I draw the line. Once the soil's saturated, you're good. Like, that doesn't need to sit in there any longer than that. Just to be safe... Especially with delicate little divas like the Amazonica. That would be very risky. Okay, moving on. Uh, does this look weird? Probably, because it is weird. You may remember at some point I did have, like, one of these that floater back there. I had another one of those in here that was a square. It had a bunch of pitcher plants in it and a mangrove that was coming out of the center. Well, I went ahead and moved that outside last weekend when the temperatures were nice and mild. Or actually, no, a few weekends ago, I think and uh, let the plants kind of go into a little bit of a rest, and then I cut them, but I, they're in my refrigerator. There will be a whole entire video on that when it's time to bring them out and get them going again, because I thought it would be fun to do that from, like, putting them into dormancy and then getting them out of dormancy, like, the whole process and see what worked and what didn't work. So, long story short, I pulled the mangrove out of that because mangroves, they, they, I can't put that in the refrigerator. It would die. Oh, here's that little 
mangrove right here. And I thought it would be nice to go ahead and pop that back up. I liked having the mangrove floating around in there. I thought it looked nice and I was actually getting pretty good growth out of it too. So I went ahead and I ordered another one of those guys back there. The stramanthi that's in there, it's just, it's doing so well that I don't want to take it out of there. So they could be kind of a pain in the butt to keep alive during the winter months indoors. So I just ordered another one. Only thing about these Laguna floating planters is that the height of those edges like bugs me. It doesn't need to be that tall. So when this came in the mail, I cut it in half so I can make another one out of it. And cause I just, it makes me feel better about spending $12 on something that is extremely easy to DIY yourself. So uh, I can make another one of these with this half where you just take some landscape fabric and basically just wrap it around there and make sure there's a pulp something like a that you can plant in down here in the center and that's pretty much it make sure it's attached and secured somehow but the very 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 simple uh, just with it being winter you know i don't really have the materials and things laying around so i thought you know i'll just hold that off on that until spring but at least this way i have one for right now so the one from laguna you just pull it through like this it is or it's kind of like pre-shaped for that larger ring but this will be fine. It doesn't need to be on a ring that's so incredibly large. Let me just pull it like that. And see, it just goes on very simply. It's very easy. Easy to do. So let me go ahead and grab some soil and pop this up. Say that like I'm ready to do this. I'm not even ready. I haven't planned any of this out. I need uh, some sticks. Where are the sticks? I need to find sticks. That's not going to work like that. This will have to do. These are like just some sticks from an orchid. Not the most sturdy thing to use but it's fine it'll work right now also i just realized that my mic pack is dead so the, sorry for the audio it's probably been terrible oh well it's okay so soil mangroves are pretty adaptable i don't have to use anything really fancy for this just as long as it will wick up moisture and there can be some air exchange it'll be okay and luckily i have some cocoa bop i have plenty of cocoa bop actually it's that stuff from fox farm i think i talked about it in the Coco Dema video. Coconut, really, really, really nice airy coconut, uh, coconut core, and it has some compost in it. And apparently you're supposed to like split the bag open and just play it right into the bag. There's a great shot. I'm not going to be doing that, but the Coco Bop should be totally fine for this. Considering that this was growing in a soil that was mixed up for uh, the pitcher plants before, which is really not compatible for something like this for a mangrove and it did well in there so I think that this should be okay. It's taking more than I thought it would because the Cocoa Bop is so incredibly airy but that's all right. I just assumed that it was doing well in that other mix because it was floating in pond water so it was getting a lot of nutrients from the fish. But, you know normally with the pitcher plants you don't really want a nutrient rich water or nutrient rich soil but everything was doing well. So I guess that that wasn't an issue, but it was a risk I was taking. There we go. A little bit more. That should do it. I accidentally knocked a leaf off. Need to be more careful. Oops. And this is a nice organic blend. I don't really have to worry about this. I don't know why I say I don't really. I don't need to worry about this affecting the aquatic life at all. Because, like I said, it's an organic blend from Fox Farm. So I don't even think there's any type of slow release in this or anything like that. It should, I'm pretty sure it's just compost, coconut, and... Probably some charcoal, obviously perlite. There's actually like some pieces of coconut husk in there, like there's still some hair. That's to speed the process up so that this doesn't have to hold off and take a long time to wick up moisture from the water that's in that pond. I'm going to water this in very heavily so that that process of water moving through that fabric on here goes a little bit more quickly. And to get the air bubbles out, look at that. Do you see how much that, look at that. That's ridiculous. Coco Bop, why are you so airy? Just a giant crater in here now. That that's a fun thing with perlite, right? Is that it just floats right to the top when there's a lot of it in there. Man, this is gonna take a lot of soil. I'm gonna finish this up and come back. I feel like this has probably gotten pretty boring by now. Okay, I don't I don't I don't know what happened. I got carried away. I remembered I had this really nice looking rock and then I was thinking I should make like a bonsai sort of it was impulsive probably it's not a good idea and gave that a little bit of a rinse make sure that that soil doesn't go down too much further this 
ultimately, like I said, probably not a great idea. In fact, this might be too heavy to even float in there. Probably should have tested that out, shouldn't I? There's only one way to find out, right? Let's see what happens here. The, I was going to... Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's see if this floats first, because if it doesn't, then I have to start over. Okay, no. We're good. This, this, that'll work fine. I was wondering if maybe a top dressing of some moss might look nice on there. The thing is, I, I don't want to waste my moss, <laughs> but I have it, so it wouldn't really be all that wasteful to do that. The other thing with using this Cocoa Bop, it is so incredibly light and airy and fluffy that it actually may not wick the water quite well enough for the mangrove. I think it'll be okay. Mangroves don't have to be in sopping wet, saturated water. They don't even have to be planted directly in water, but it helps. <laughs> it helps speed things up a little bit. I don't know. It's an experiment. We'll wait and see, but you gotta admit, doesn't that look so much better than that, doesn't it? I mean, the stromanthe is beautiful, but that edge is just way too high. I don't, it doesn't need to be up that high. There, there are, I suppose, some benefits to that, like not having to worry about if there's going to be a heavy rain or something like that, washing as much stuff out, but that can be avoided just as easily by not filling it with tons and tons of soil, right? I think that would be just fine. Uh, either way, I'm glad to have that done. And uh, this would also be, I may, I'll probably pull that rock out. We will see. Over time, I think that that would look neat, but a very long time because mangroves kind of grow like snails. But over time, you know, it'll have stilt roots with that rock underneath it. I think it would look neat. So uh, it's the next day and I, I just, I don't know what happened. I was filming then I just stop. Well, I do know what happened. I remembered that it was supposed to drop down to like five degrees, so I had to move the rest of the palm trees into the garage. is isn't that big a deal. They just kind of slide right in. I am like, did I plant these up in cement? Those windmill palms, very heavy. I think maybe heavier than the mule palms. I mean, I use the same light mix I always do. I probably just put like tons of rocks or something on the bottoms of the... Actually, I don't think I did do... I don't know. I was, they're also pretty cold and frozen and I wasn't feeling it. So that's probably part of that. Oh, I never mentioned, I did pick out a ficus in that vlog a few weeks ago when I was like, I'm going to pick out a ficus and we'll talk about it. I never, no, it's right here. I don't like to move plants into the bubble till I've had them for a little while. Just so I can like make sure they've been assessed for insects and whatnot. It seems fine though. And it's actually doing surprisingly well over here in this corner up against the plastic. Wouldn't have thought that. This is a very dark, grainy place to be filming. But anyway, so the cold passed. Just another chilly winter day. No big deal. And then I can slide these back out in a couple days. This year's been great for these hardy palms. Like, fantastic. I haven't had to have them inside much at all, really. I mean, when we've had, like, a lot of ice, I've moved them in. Uh, so uh, I'd say in total, like, if I were to combine all the days from a uh, early November till now, like maybe they've been in here a total of two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks, which is nothing. And there's like a little bit of foliar burn on the um, mule palms. You can kind of see it back there, but it's not significant at all. And it's on old growth. So that's really a lot of that. It's just a combination of wind burn more than anything, which could happen at any point really with the old foliage. So yeah, I'm really surprised. There's even new spears opening up, which means that they're they're still growing despite having been outside all winter. Just such a bizarre, weird, cool winter. And I feel like I just said winter way too many times. Winter, winter, winter. Also, I uh, came out here and I was like, something feels different, doesn't it? Does anything seem different to you guys? You see it? I bet you can. What the heck happened here? A monstera fell over. To be fair, I've known that it needed a repot for a little while, but I just didn't think it needed it like right now, but looks like I was wrong about that, wasn't I? No, I really was hoping that that repot could wait until the springtime, just because that's not the easiest thing to do in here with big plants. I can do little repots with, you know, small little plants, but when they're big, like that Monstera, 
There just isn't much space to work with, and my tripod looked like it was about to fall over. Eh, should I tighten it up? Okay. Long story short, what do you think is going to be going on the vlog next week? Yeah, uh, repot. That's more on the fur than the Monstera, but I think you get it. I don't really think I have a choice if it's going to be flopping over, right? I think I sort of have to get that done now. And you know, it, the steak that's in there was just meant to be temporary for like a few weeks anyway, so it would be better for the plant to get that done. I don't know where I'm going to do it, but I'll figure it out. It's not that big a deal. It's actually it's supposed to be like, I think, 55 degrees on, what, Sunday? So I could maybe pull the plant outside. Eh, I'll figure it out. It isn't that big of a deal. It's just a matter of not really wanting to get such a humongous large volume of soil spilling all over the place in here, but it is what it is. Surrounded by plants, there's gonna be some spilt soil. So that's fun and exciting. There was one other thing real quick. Uh, earlier in the vlog, when I went ahead and I put my plants in that black drainage dish and put the fertilizer in there, uh, that looked like a lot more fertilizer than I would normally use for this sort of thing. Just to correct myself really quickly here, I typically use like basically just a dusting. This isn't a gallon here, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to show you. But with the little measuring spoon that's in here, I'll see if I can, I don't even see any numbers in here. So I can't really tell you how much it is, but I would say per gallon, it's like maybe, I don't know, a quarter to a half a teaspoon. If even the idea is just to make sure that there's some nutrient in the water, but it's not enough to make the plants want to explode in growth. So that's the only reason I do that. Like I said, it's warm out here. And the lights are pretty decent, so I'm not worried about that. If it's a plant that just is sitting still all winter, then I would not add any fertilizer to its water because I don't want to tell the plant, hey, you need to start growing when it doesn't want to. That could just like really throw it off of its rhythm of trying to rest and wait for spring to come around with the longer day lengths and warmer temperatures. I think that's it for this week's vlog though. I know it's kind of a shorter one, but you know, it's the dead of winter and just, there's not a lot going on. So there's not really much to walk around and talk about or to do together. I have been thinking maybe with that mangrove, I might pull that rock out of there and utilize the space that's in the top of that for propagation. That would make more sense. But in the future, I think it would look would look nice to put a rock in there probably that same one and have the mangrove grow up around it i think that'll look neat but that is just such an ideal opportune spot to have like little clippings from my epipetum panatum or i mean really any of my pothos i think would look nice in there and it's a great space for propagation it's a nice light loamy lofty soil mix that is moist that's, 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 that'll work well. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well and having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. My social media is linked down below. I'm on Instagram more than anything else by far. And then if you'd like to support the channel, that'd be fantastic. You can, you know, do the whole entire smacking my tripod around. <laughs> I'm asking people to like the video. You know, all the YouTube stuff down there. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. I tried those flower rocket pillow things before. <laughs> I don't have very high hopes for them, but we'll see. Just something fun to play around with. Let me know if you want me to plant those up now or wait till spring. I, I'm kind of indifferent, to be honest. So, But they seem pretty, um, I'm just going to say non-reliable. That just I don't have high hopes for them. So ideally, I wouldn't have space being taken up on my plant shelves with something that I don't think is really going to grow very well. But maybe it could be like a, you know, hey, spring's just a few weeks away. I'll go ahead and start them now and get them ready. Or I could even start them outside, potentially, depending on what the seed blend is. That's, that's a potential option, too. Oh, and look at this new leaf the Bird of Paradise opened up. This thing's a monster. I don't see that fitting in here for too many more years that's okay though they do well inside i have two of them and uh the two that i have they're not gigantic but they have a wide a width to them that makes it difficult to keep anything near them because they like see how it's pressing up against the croton back there they just end up kind of shading things out a little bit so i don't know like that's not a big deal i can always put those in the house they're pretty easy to keep alive indoors that's not a big deal hey but like i said hope everybody's doing well and of course as always and most importantly everybody 
I laugh whenever I see that little creeper's face pop into frame. He's ridiculous. Keep on growing, baby.